Um, <coughs> let me start by thanking the organizers for giving the opportunity to speak and present my latest results. Um, I'm in the application section, <laughs> so I'm not allowed to <laughs> present our latest method development, but you'll, you'll, you'll have to take it anyway. Um, the, the, whole, the whole idea of a meeting on, you are talking about free energy, free energy calculations. So we are coming here with some PKA shifts and uh, we always look at PKA shifts as actually as free energy also. So I think we are in the right place. Uh, unfortunately, throughout the whole meeting, I didn't, say, I didn't see too many people talking about pH and pH effects. So I think uh, at, the, at the end of my, sp of my presentation, you'll have an idea that maybe neglecting the protonation effects uh, might be a, a big problem. Maybe you all know that, but <laughs> you don't have the way of uh, doing it correctly or doing it efficiently or fastly, so maybe that is the main problem. So I'm going to talk about two different systems, one with a membrane, another one in just a ligand binding. And uh, in these two different systems, I'm going to show you really the latest results, because doing PKA calculations in proteins for us is just like very fast and peptides and even membranes, like with lipid titrating, we can do it very fast. But now we are interested in really like the tip of the iceberg, like when, it's it, when it becomes, when does it break? So when is it difficult? So I brought to you two different systems where we never thought about it, but now we are looking at it and it's really interesting. I hope you, you, you kind of of liking it, of liking it. And I'm also starting to apologize for my Notebook, it's probably the last meeting is, is going to travel, <laughs> but uh, you'll see, like everything breaks, so if it survives, the whole presentation is great. So, uh, <laughs> whenever we have something like a, 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 an inhibitor coin coming in an active site or, or, or a, a ligand going in an active site, there will be pH effect. pH is important for sure. I'll, I'll try to convince you. Another important point will be on, uh, give it time. Uh, another important time important uh, will be when you have a typical drug commercial available compound like donatazil here and uh, acetylcholine esterase and when it's coming in and it's going to bind and it binds very strongly everybody knows this and uh, the thing is what does it happen does it does it should should we make a, just a thermodynamic cycle and calculate the, the, the energy of binding is it possible does it pH uh, has a relevant role I will come back to this system in the end of the of the talk, and you have uh, you will evaluate that for yourself. So, of course, we are also interested in stuff interactive membrane. So we defined we know more or less the, the protonation profile of chitorphin. It's just the simplest uh, peptide that we have in our in our brain. It's something that uh, is very important when you are very happy, when you are with your boyfriend slash girlfriend. This is the stuff that makes love <laughs> so the, this kytorf is very important but we know the profile we know how this this uh, very simple molecule behaves on the protonation uh, of this molecule in the water but what happens in the membrane this was something that we did some while some time ago and prompt a lot of stuff that i'm going to show you right now so how can we deal with ph what can you do how, how do we usually tackle uh, ph in, in mb simulations so well, the most advanced method nowadays is constant ph molecular dynamics and we can do that because MD usually conf can sample confirmations rather well. And we know that we can use fast methods. I'm going to just give you an example of possible or not Carlo, but we can use other methods like Janine Born and some other tricks. There are also other methods that are still, the only requirement is that it has to be accurate enough and fast, of course, otherwise it becomes too slow. And uh, when we join this, we can actually have constant pH molecular dynamics. And there are several flavors. So our flavor is actually developed by Antonio Batista in Lisbon, and uh, we do my our work a few years ago. And this 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 method, when uh, implemented and extended to lipids, it's, that is the, this is the work that we, we developed these recent years. When you extend this to lipids, titrating, we can actually study molecules interacting with the membrane, and the lipids can actually change protonation. Of course, if it's like a DNPC or POPC membrane, probably is not so interesting. But the moment you start adding like an ionic lipid to the mixture, and sometimes you need to to make it a little bit more real, then it becomes problematic. And then you don't know anymore what is the charge that the membrane should be at a certain pH. So what did you what did you have uh, we have to add to, to be able to to simulate pH? So the thing is, 
In our method, it's quite simple. We do a, a, like a, a, a protonation, a protonation calculation. So it's a PBMC calculation. So we get out the protonation state out of it. We, uh, it because some, some groups might change the protonation state, we'll need to do a small uh, solvent relaxation step because it might happen that you just add the proton when there was no proton, that, that creates a problem. Then you just relax the system, and once you relax, you can actually do production. And then you just cycle that. This is very small steps here. Usually for proteins, we do like two picosecond steps. For membrane systems, everything is a little bit more slow. We can actually go up to 20 picoseconds, no problem. And when you do these kind of simulations, uh, we, there's just some technical details. When we do these simulations uh, with lipids, we actually have to add a little bit more, how do you say, more technicality. So we can no longer possible some calculations for, to, to determine the potential of a grid on top of your solid. So this, the possible Boltzmann needs to take, when you use membranes, you need to take in consideration the periodicity in the x, y um, dimension. So, uh, and of course, you, for, for, some, uh, for, for ion estimation, and whenever we are using charge membranes, the counter ion estimation needs to be very correct, otherwise everything also goes wrong. So for that, you need to use non-linear non uh, possible Boltzmann, which is much better than the, the like this happen we could use niche up in theory to, for that, but it's usually it's very rough, it's not very accurate. And uh, of course, and then we have to use this, this stuff. This, this looks like the, just a small detail, but this is actually uh, a lot of work when uh, we are trying to uh, find out how many counter ions should this charge membrane have. This is really tricky. And, uh, and uh, I, I, what I can assure you is for the size of the box that we use, uh, you can actually cannot neutralize the box, which is a problem for PME, which is it's a nice discussion yesterday. Um, so the first system I'm going to show you is just a simple pentapeptides. We chose this because this is something that we use for, for water calibration. We, we calibrated the pKa of side chains of amino acids from these pentapeptides because we have the data from, uh, from Nick Pace's lab. So they, they, they have pKa's of these pentapeptides. So we run simulations in water for this. We calibrate the, the, the model compound pKa. You see, so we, we know, uh, uh, we are sure that if we run simulations in water, we will get exactly the, ex the uh, macroscopic experimental PKA, so which, which is very good. So now we can do something quite nice. I'm going to show you the example for glutamate, but we did this for all, uh, for all touchable. We didn't do it for arginine for, for several reasons, probably. Uh, but uh, for glutamate, we know that the PKA in water is 4.25 in the dispenta peptide. So, when you look at it, we start with the glutamate a little bit far, not too far, otherwise the box becomes too large. We are not so interested in finding out the PKA at 14 angstroms away from the membrane. Um, so the, the next thing I'm going to show you is how I'm depicting my membrane. So I'm taking away all these lipids, showing only the phosphate and the nitrogens. You can see the nitrogens here, the phosphate over here. And you can see here it's the glutamate, it's the carboxylic from the glutamate. And once I start the, the whole thing, I can uh, follow the insertion. Here is just a trick, it's just a video for you to see the idea. But uh, the, 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 what I want you to, to, to understand uh, when you're looking at this is there's no longer uh, uh, a PKA. The idea of having one PKA doesn't make any sense. Of course, microscopically, the experimentalist is going to measure something liposomes, it will give you a number. That is macroscopic PKA. For us, if you want more information, we should see uh, kind of a slicing of the system, but you should have a pKa variation along the membrane normal. Whenever something is coming in, the pKa will change. Some people will say that it's pH, that is our well, membrane becomes more acidic whenever you go close, but then it's like this thing going around, right? So it's, it, you can call it the low pH, is the pKa is becoming lower, or actually the pKa's are going up, or vice versa. You see the idea? So it's just one interpretation. So in all sense, it's just free energy. <laughs> so, so, but for you to, 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 for, to better understand this graphic, uh, this picture, you, you, you really need to, to, to see this as a slicing of the membrane. So this is membrane normal. So zero is when you pass the level of the phosphates down. So the first thing that comes out from this graphic, and you can look at the water values here. So this is the water values of all of them. Is that whenever you're coming in, if you, if you have an anionic, so the PKA goes up. If you have a cationic, PKA goes down. I think all of you 
couldn't get that, right? It's not so. But then they, they are not so. That not all of them are the same. Not all of them shift the same. And for some of them, we can we cannot actually measure stuff. We, I would expect the C terminus to come up. The problem is that we, we start uh, stumbling into um, sampling problems. We, we, we start having. We have a lot of confirmations with the C terminus inserted, but it's always neutral. So you 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 can no longer get and for you to measure pKa you still you need to stick Anderson Hasselbach on on some average protonation and for that I would have to go on the C terminus and probably simulate it at, the, at these pH values and now I was not interested it's very hard so unless I start using new uh, faster methodologies and non sampling techniques so but looking here at for instance glutamate you can have pKa's around seven so whenever we have a peptide or something with a glutamate and do we say, OK, I'm going to simulate in 7, I'm going to use it ionized. Yeah, it makes sense unless his, this glutamate is actually at the interface and coming in or in some uh, membrane protein. If it's in a membrane protein and it's in the region around what? This is this, more or less here, it's the ester region. So there's still water here. So glutamate could be there. And the PKA probably is shifted a lot. The next one can be the N-terminus. The N-terminus can really come down and then it's the neutral form, it's really very stable until a very low pKa. So it's just a primary primary mean that can go really very low. And uh, this one is, I already call your attention to it, it's the, the matter that we cannot measure the pKa. So this this is quite nice, we can, we can do this stuff. Uh, but I'm coming back to um, something that probably will, will say some a little bit more to, to what you usually do in your in your uh, in your day-to-day -day calculations. So we are interested in checking out this donepezil coming here, coming in and uh, inhibiting acetylcholinesterase. You see this, this is a, a tertiary amine, so it has a pKa of 8.5. So if you put this or, uh, in any protocol, probably you will use the donepezil as a protonated species, right? Because it only gets neutral after pH 8.5. If you are running a simulation or calculation at pH 7, it makes sense. So we all agree on that. The problem is that uh, the most abundant in water is an ionized species. Will this species be ionized when the, the drug comes into the protein? This is, I, not many people think about what, what happened. And another thing is, what happens when the, when the drug comes in into the pocket, what happens to the protein? This is also interesting. There are groups that are touchable. Look, this is the catalytic triad. You can look at it. So there's the serine here, there's the base, so it's an acidine, and then there's the activated uh, carboxylate. So we expect the base to be neutral, so this is histidine 447, and this is uh, the glutamate over there. We expect it to be charged, even though it's internalized, but we, ex we expect it to be charged. So this is what we have. We have other residues. This is another glutamate right next to the catalytic cycle and we have also an aspartate a little bit outside. So there's lots of groups that can actually exchange protons, and this can happen. So what we did was we did just uh, umbrella sampling just to get the sampling, because uh, this only makes sense when the drug uh, hits the pocket, because when it comes out, it's all hell breaks loose. We don't know where it goes, and we just don't care. We are not interested in, in, the, in the energy of the binding, sorry. <laughs> Probably we should have, because <laughs> We, 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 I chose this system because I did some like docking calculations on it, and uh, docking gives terrible results. I think everybody agrees on that, but this was too, way too terrible. It was way too bad, even for docking. Uh, it's like three or four orders of magnitude away and on, on, the, on the inhibition constant. So when I was looking at it, I said, like, it cannot be that bad. It was auto dock. And then I, I just started playing it with the numbers, and you can actually get better, but not really uh, straight out of the box. So when, when we are coming with this drug here, it, when it's uh, like at this distance, probably doesn't have so much meaning. When it's probably like 15 angstroms, 15 angstroms it, it's already holding, and it's not going anywhere because it's holded by the, the bias that we introduce and the Hamiltonian. So uh, we can continue and following and sample all these coordinates until it reaches zero. So I, co I consider zero it will be uh, the x-ray structure. We have the x-ray structure, we know where it goes. And doing exactly this, after, afterwards we, we need to reweight all, all our um, properties and protonation is one of those properties, so we have to reweight all, 
all, uh, um, all our protonations to get it to remove the bias that we first introduced. And this is just the simplest one. So this is Don Epezio, right? So you look at here, of course it's protonated. It's protonated when it's in water, it's protonated when it's coming into the channel. The moment it, it, that this specific tertiary mean becomes blocked and like in the plug, because a, a silical interface has a pocket, it's not so big as a pocket, but then it has a, like a plug, uh, a, it's like a cork that needs to pass this region. The moment that it comes here, you see the difference and the effect it has on protonation. So this protonation suggests something like at least two pH units shift. So it's no longer, the, the, the ionized uh, uh, species is no longer the most abundant. And the, the interesting thing is that you can actually see that it fluctuates because it, 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 it's seeing different potential. PK, the PKA it just reflects, in this case it's protonation, but protonation of the species reflects the electrostatic potential that it sees. And, and the electrostatic potential is coupled because the other groups are also changing protonation states in our method. So it, it's, it's rather complex to interpret. Sometimes you see correlation, sometimes it's, you need to, to see effects on the second and third uh, uh, neighbors to see the correlation of the potential. And here is X-ray structure. So now you see, if I want to do like a docking or something that will stick my Donepezil on the pocket, really on top of the X-ray, error mass zero. If I do that, <laughs> the protonation state average is 0.5. Should I put the proton or not? Some people will just tell me, yeah, you should do both. <laughs> if you do both, you might get it. Yes, but for, for docking is terrible. If you, do, if you try to do docking here, if you move just one, uh, one or two angstroms away from it, and there are poses, like one on the pocket, another one a little bit on the side, the protonation is like this. It's, it's really very bad. And it's not only for Donepezil. I'm going to show you, for instance, aspartate here. Aspartate is probably solvated, so it's ionized. You see here on blue. So it's ionized, more or less. But uh, whenever the drug comes here, because the drug has a little bit of charge, even if, if it loses the charge over here, but the because Donepezil has the charge, then the, the complete ionized, ionization of this aspartate happens. When, when, when the drug is completely released, there's that effect is no longer, and then we see a little bit of dissolvation effect. If you look again on, uh, now we, we can look on another, another residue, we can look at this glutamate, this is auxiliary glutamate over here, it's just sitting there, and this guy, glutamate 202, is actually neutral. If we, I don't know, if, if, if I'm going to, to prepare a docking protocol, probably I didn't know what to do with this guy. If I, if I put this, this uh, structure in most P, uh, PKA calculation methods, uh, most of them will give me this uh, ionized. And the, th the, the thing is, it only gets ionized when histidine, which is sitting right next to it, becomes protonated. You'll see right away. So it's around here, around 15. So now we look at the histidine, so this is the base, and when we look at it, and then sometimes it gets a little bit of ionized, but not so much. But it should be neutral, so this, there's no problem. Everybody would agree that mostly this histidine will be, will be neutral. But you see here that in that position, whenever it gets a little bit of charge, then of course the neighbors will feel it and they will react accordingly. And, uh, and finally, we can see here the, how do you say, the, the, this is the acid that is actually uh, activating the, the histidine. And this guy is activating histidine, and I don't know. It's completely, it's, it, depends, it depends a lot of, on the electrostatic of, of, of the medium, but, but I would say that a macroscopic PK of, of this guy is probably 0 0.5. It's just something that sometimes it has a problem, sometimes it doesn't. But it, it does react to the position of, of, the, of the drug. And this, this makes it very difficult. But suddenly you start having like five, six, well, if it's five or six, you can give, make, uh, create all combinations. But then it's, you start multiplying, it's two to the power of n. So <laughs> it's, it's, suddenly you're thinking about doing like four calculations and you are now making 100 because it's, it's too much. So as a summary and to conclude, so I, I hope I convinced you that we can actually make calculate PKs in very different environments. Uh, these calculations, we can calculate the, uh, the PK is not only on the proteins, but also on, on, on simple drugs. And we, we calibrate, whenever we have PK, experimental PKs, we, we need experimental PKs for the drug in water. We calibrate and we, we are measuring shifts, which means that it's not really, it's not, uh, the typical errors on these PK calculations are usually very small. 
and uh, I'm still working on a way to estimate, to correctly estimate errors on those on those points. I'm sorry, <laughs> this gra this graphic was prepared one week ago. <laughs> so um, we, we we can correlate very well when we have a peptide inserting in a membrane. We can correlate very well PKs of insertion, which don't need to really they don't need to to uh, really be correlated with PKAs of groups there. Uh, Directly, but we have nice correlation in some systems. I didn't, I didn't show this for the sake of time, and uh, and this is really very new. This is something that I uh, I wanted to show you because I think it's in the proper form forum to show you is that you can follow the protonation, and uh, I I think uh, uh, some of you already start thinking that maybe some of these groups that we have um, and some of these studies that we have probably could take advantage of something uh, to deal with pH. And of course, this is what we are working now because whenever we do go into these extreme points, we start having some, some sampling problem and we need you know, sampling techniques to, to deal with it. And I'd like to thank all the guys who did the work. So these are the four guys that came along and brought the poster. So they all contributed directly or indirectly to this work and uh, collaborations and funding, of course. And thank you all. <laughs>